Palace Pets, Pumpkin, Cinderella's Dancing Pup. Chapter 1 Pumpkin growled. Something was out of the place in Cinderella's room. There on the bed, a flat, square, pink thing stuck out from under Cinderella's pillow. It didn't belong. Cinderella kept her room spotless. For years, she had cleaned for her stepmother and stepsisters. Now she lived in a castle with a prince and had lots of help, but she was still very tidy. She dusted and swept. She always made her bed. She put away every gown and crown. Pumpkin looked at Cinderella. She was brushing her hair and singing. She wasn't going to take care of the thing under her pillow. Well, Pumpkin would. The princess had given Pumpkin to Cinderella as a present and Pumpkin had looked out for her ever since. They were best friends. Pumpkin st stalked the object, moving slowly across the floor. Her paw didn't make a sound. She leaped onto the bed and crawled on her belly across the blanket toward the pillow. She lowered her eyes. She raised her tail. Then Pumpkin gave a warning bark and pounced. She snatched the square thing between her teeth, growling, she shook it back and forth. Pumpkin, what's wrong? Cinderella asked as she rushed to the bed. Pumpkin raised her eyes to Cinderella. She tried to look fierce, but her tail gave her away. It was wagging. Cinderella noticed the square thing in Pumpkin's mouth. What's that? she asked. Pumpkin dropped the thing on Cinderella's pillow. It didn't move. In fact, it didn't seem very dangerous anymore. It's an envelope, Cinderella said. An envelope? Hmm. Cinderella was right. How could Pumpkin have known? That from across the room, embarrassed, she backed away. Cinderella read the envelope. It says, to Cinderella and Pumpkin. She knelt and Pumpkin put her paws on Cinderella's knees. How exciting! It was a surprise, and Pumpkin had found it. Cinderella neatly opened the envelope. She pulled out a fancy piece of paper. It's an invitation to a ball tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the garden. Don't be late, it says. Cinderella laughed. Oh, Pumpkin, ever since I was late to my first ball, people always think I'll be late. Pumpkin sniffed the invitation. She felt bad about the teeth marks on it. But a ball? Pumpkin loved balls. Balls meant dancing, and dancing was Pumpkin's absolute favorite thing in the world. I haven't told you the best part, Pumpkin, Cinderella said. She rubbed the fur between Pumpkin's ears. It's not just any ball. It's a masquerade ball. That means we'll dress up in costumes. Dancing in costumes? Pumpkin barked. She couldn't imagine Anything more exciting? Chapter 2 Pumpkin woke up the sun. The ball! It was today! She jumped into the bed and stood on Cinderella's back. The princess barely moved. Pumpkin licked her face. Cinderella put an arm around her eyes. Too early, she groaned. First, the prince woke me up when he went out riding. Now you? Sleep! Need more sleep! Cinderella rolled into her side and went silent. Pumpkin tilted her head. Why wasn't Cinderella more excited? It was okay, though. Pumpkin was excited enough for both of them. Pumpkin bounced off the bed. She spun in circles on the floor. Today! Today! The ball was today. And she spun the other way, just because she could. Much about the ball was silent. still a mystery. Who had sent the invitation? Was it Gus or Jut, her mouse friends? Was it Bibbidi, the pony? Was it Bruno, the dog? The only one Pumpkin could rule out was Cinderella because the invitation was for her too. Pumpkin had another question. What costume should she wear? She could be a fairy or a pirate 
or a spider, a spy, an angel. There were so many to choose. She had even thought of dressing up like a cat, but no, that was silly. Pumpkin scratched her ear with her back paw. Choosing a costume was hard. She could worry about that later. Right now, she would practice dancing. After all, that was the most important part of a ball. Pumpkin dashed out of Cinderella's bedroom. She pranced down the white marble stairs outside dew stone on the grass and the lakes. Of the trees, she marbled terrace. Two was covered in dew. The sun was out and a slight breeze was blowing. Perfect weather for dancing. Pumpkin stood in the middle of the terrace. She bowed at an imaginary partner. Then she started to twirl. She twirled to her left. She twirled to her right. The trees around her blurred. She closed her eyes. She twirled and twirled and twirled. And Pumpkin, watch out! <clears throat> it was Bibbity. What was she shouting about? Pumpkin's eyes sprang open. Oh, she was inching away from falling. Over the edge of the terrace, she tried to stop, but her paw slipped on the dew. Pumpkin slid toward the edge of the terrace. Luckily, a bush stopped her. Unfortunately, it was a rose bush with thorns. Ouch! Bibbity curtained over and looked down at Pumpkin. Are you okay? she asked. Pumpkin started back at her. Why was Bibbity upside down? Then she realized Bibbity wasn't upside down. She was. I'm okay, Pumpkin answered. She rolled out of the bush. She got to her paw. Ouch, ouch, owie, owie, owie. She rose one paw. Oh, dragged something long and sharp was stuck in it. It was a thorn, a big one. Nope, not okay, Pumpkin corrected herself. That looks like it hurts, Bibbity said. I'll get Cinderella. Chapter 3 Oh, Pumpkin, Cinderella said. She held Pumpkin's paw in her hand and shook her head. Behind her, Bibbity shook her head too. How do you get into such messes? Messes? What was Cinderella talking about? Pumpkin never got into messes. Well, there was the time she fell into... The pig pen, and when she got stung by a bumblebee, and the time, never mind. Why think about stuff like that? This might hurt a little, Cinderella warned. She took the thorn between her fingers. Pumpkin gritted her teeth. Cinderella gently pulled the thorn out. Pumpkin was brave, and it hardly hurt at all. There, Cinderella said. Now I'll fix it up. Cinderella cleaned Pumpkin's paw. Then she wrapped a soft white bandage around it. She tried the bandage snug with a knot. How's that? Cinderella asked. Go on, give it a try. Bibbidi and Cinderella watched as Pumpkin carefully stood up. So far, so good. She took a step. It hurt a little. Pumpkin tried to twirl. Ow, 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 ow. Nope. Dancing was not good. She'd have to settle for walking with a limp. But how could she go to the ball if she couldn't dance? What fun would that be? Try to stay off it, Cinderella gave Pumpkin's hurt paw a kiss, then went back inside. Stay off her paw! Pumpkin rolled onto her back and looked at the sky. The day started. The day stretched long before her. A day without dancing would be boring. I bet Cinderella is going to work on her costume again, Bibbidi said. Pumpkin sighed. I guess, she said. I would work on my costume too, said Bibbidi. I guess, Pumpkin said again. You should work on your costume, Bibbidi told her friend. I guess. Hey, Pumpkin rolled over. Her tail began to wag. That's right. I have to make a costume. I'm going to be a fairy, pirate, spider, spy, angel. It'll be perfect. Bibbidi looked doubtful. That sounds complicated. But I know who can help us. The mice. You've been helping Cinderella. She just made a beautiful mask with them. Yes, Bibbidi was right. 
the mice were good at making costumes and dresses. Pumpkin leaped to her feet. Ouch! She lifted her hurt paw. She had to... Remember not to use it for a while. Pumpkin limped behind Bibbidi into the castle. They went to the mouse workspace. The mice were already making their costumes for the ball. Pumpkin exclaimed her idea to Jack. You're going to be a fairy pirate spider spy angel, he repeated. He pulled on his whiskers. Hmm, start with the mask. Zip, zip. He brought out two plain white masks. One was for Pumpkin, the other for her friend Bibbidi. Gus pointed to some pots of colorful paint. Got lots of paint, he said, and feathers, and glitter, and buttons, and beads. So many colors, Pumpkin dove right in. She was feeling red today, and maybe a little yellow. Pumpkin used her paw to spread the paint on the white mask. The red and yellow paint smeared together and made orange. But that was okay. Pumpkin liked orange, too. The mask still needed something. Feathers! She found some colorful feathers. They would look good with the orange. She backed up for a better view and knocked over a pot of glue. Oh, well. She needed glue for the feathers anyway. With the mice help, she stuck them on the mask. It wasn't quite what she had pictured, but... I'm done, Bibbidi said. Want to see? In front of the pony was a gorgeous blue mask. There was a large pink bow on either side. Oh, Bibbidi, Pumpkin said. It's beautiful. She looked at her mask again. The orange paint was a little spotty. Red and orange feathers stuck out from both sides. She went to move one of the feathers, but something was wrong with her paw. They were orange, and they were stuck together. Bibbidi went whined with laughter. Pumpkin, how do you get into such messes, she said. She sounded just like Cinderella. Pumpkin laughed. I don't mean to, she said. Then she rolled around the workshop floor, trying to pull her paws apart. The glue was strong. Chapter 4 Three mice pulled on one paw. Three more mice pulled on the other. Finally, Pumpkin's paw popped apart. The mice wiped them clean. Pumpkin's mask was all done and she was proud of it. She didn't want to take it off. She left it on top of her head. Now she had to figure out the rest of her costume. She turned to Jack. What do you keep? Where do you keep the wings? She asked. Jack frowned. Wings, he said. The fairy wings for my costume, Pumpkin said. I don't think we have... And I need a pirate hat, a spy clock, eight black spider legs, and a golden halo, Pumpkin went on. Then I'll be ready. Jack thought for a second. He scrampered to a box on the work table, which was full of bows and ribbons and lace. He rummaged through it. Ah, he said, pulling out a long strip of black cloth. Look, a spy clock. Zoop, zip, but I don't have the other things. The wings and legs and hat and halo. Have to find them yourselves. Thanks, Jack, Pumpkin said, bouncing on her paws. Ouch! She keep forgetting about her hurt paw. All morning, Pumpkin searched for bits of her costume, but it wasn't easy. She found a pirate hat on the princess wardrobe. He wouldn't mind if she borrowed it. Why did the prince have a pirate hat anyway? After that, her luck ran out. She tried to make fairy wings out of silk kites, but they were a flop. She pointed eight sticks black, but they didn't look like spider legs. They just looked like eight black sticks. And the halo pumpkin was stumped. Pumpkin and Bibbidi got together in front of Pumpkin's costume, the black spy clock, and the pirate hat. 
Oh, and the mask? At least Pumpkin had her mask. Well, she wouldn't be a fairy pirate spider spy angel this time. She'd just be a puppy spy pirate? Then her tummy rumbled. Bibbidi gave her a look. Pumpkin, did you have breakfast today? Pumpkin shook her head. She'd been too excited to eat. Do you have lunch? Bibbidi asked. Nope, Pumpkin said. She'd been too busy looking for her costume. You have to eat something, Bibbidi said. Yes, Bibbidi was right. Pumpkin was very hungry. The kitchen was always crazy before the ball. But come... Pumpkin knew the secret spot for getting food, the spring house. The garden stored fresh fruit and vegetables there, tomatoes red and ripe, potatoes with dirt still on them, grapes just off the vine, carrots pulled right out of the ground, and a big bag of puppy treats. He was Pumpy, Pumpkin's friend. Pumpkin's paw twinkled with pain when she stood up. She was still leaning, to learning to take it easy. She might not be able to dance at the ball, but she'd be there to have fun with her friends. I'm going to get some lunch, Pumpkin said. I mean breakfast, or maybe dinner. Oh, I don't know. Better hurry, Bibbidi told her. The ball is at 8 o'clock. You still need to put on your costume. I won't be late. I won't be late, Pumpkin said. Chapter 5. The spring house was tucked away in the back of the garden. Pine trees shaded it. A little crack creek trickled past. Moss covered the roof. Pumpkin nudged the wooden door open with her nose. Cool air greeted her, so did the smell of dirt and the smell of puppy treats. Pumpkin looked around. Where were they? She didn't see a single tree anywhere. She peeked into her bag, potatoes. She checked another bag, nope, tomatoes. In one corner was a bag of carrots, peppers, and squash. There were even a few round orange pumpkins. Pumpkin shut her eyes and sniffed the air. There, she could smell the treat. She followed her nose. Silly gardener he had stuck the puppy treats in the what in the way in the back behind the squash pumpkin pulled the sack open with her teeth and dug in yum 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 she loved treats she loved the crunch of them she loved the taste of bang pumpkin jumped what was that she spun around oh pew it was just the door of the spring house the wind must have blown it shut Pumpkin ate two more treats, then she groaned in a, on a carrot. Soon her belly felt full. Good. She needed to get ready for the ball. Pumpkin walked to the spring house door and pushed it with her nose. Nothing happened. She pushed it harder. Still nothing. She stood on her back paws and pushed with her front paw. The one that wasn't hurt. Hard, harder, er. Nope, the door didn't move. Pumpkin growled at the door. The door didn't care. She scratched at the front floor at the bottom of the door. It was packed hard with only one good paw. It would take her all night. To dig out, and then what? She would miss the ball. Oh, Pumpkin howled. She was so loud she scared herself. Someone had to hear her. But no one came. Pumpkin was trapped. She might be stuck here forever, or at least until the gardener showed up. Cinderella and Bibby were right. How did she get into such messes? Pumpkin lay down on the floor. She put her head on her paw. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw something twinkle. Pumpkin raised her head. What was that? There. There it is again. Light sparkled behind the grapes. Maybe it was a lightning bug? Pumpkin got up to check it out. Oh, there was a crack in the spring house. Well, that isn't very big, but neither is Pumpkin. Maybe this was her way out. Pumpkin squeezed past the crate of grapes and vines. Just tangled in her fur 
and pushed forward until she snapped loose from the twisty vines. She crawled along the wall of the crack. She could see outside. She wiggled her head through the crack. She wiggled her paw through. She wiggled her back through, and her tail wiggled itself through. She was free! From the castle tower, the clock began to chime. It was 8 o'clock. She was going to be late for the ball. Chapter 6 Pumpkin raced through the trees. She dashed across the grass. She dodged rocks and roots. Up ahead, she saw lights. It was the garden. Round orange pepper lantern lined the pathway. Blue and white banners hung from the trees. Silk flags waved in the breeze. Pumpkin was almost there. She was running so fast, her mask slipped. It fell over her eyes. All the feathers of her mask fell off. Then she shut, shook it straight. But oh, an unlit lantern had fallen on the ground in her path. She couldn't swerve out of the way in time. Pumpkin crashed right inside the lantern. Head first, she tried to shake it off, but it was stuck around her legs and belly. She poked her paw out of the top and got back up. She started running again. Cinderella, Bibby, Jack, wait for me, she cried. I'm coming. Pumpkin skidded into the garden. She was already panting hard, and she sight of the ball took away the rest of her breath. The lanterns, the banner, and the costume. It was all so beautiful. Cinderella stood in the middle of the garden. She wore a shimmery blue and white gown. There were sparkle wings on her back. She was a fairy. Next to her, the prince was dressed as a pirate. He wore a puffy white shirt, eye patch, but no hat. Hmm. The mice were long ears and had cotton balls tied over their tails. They were little bunnies. Bruno was covered in white powder and black ink spots. He wasn't a hound dog anymore. He was a dalma dalmatian. Best of all was Bibby. She had added a golden horn to her mask. Bibby was a pretty little unicorn. Their costumes were so nice. If only Pumpkin had one too. She sighed. Well, at least she had her mask. Bibbidi totted over. You made it, she said. Isn't the ball wonderful? Guess who did all this? The prince. The prince? I never thought of him, Pumpkin said. Oh, Bibbidi, you won't believe what happened. I got trapped in the spring house. I just got out. I don't have time to put on my costume. What do you mean, Bibbidi said. Your costume is perfect. I like it even better than the... Puppy spy pirate idea. Pumpkin tilted her head. What was Bibbidi talking about? Go take a look in the fountain, Bibbidi said. Pumpkin went to the fountain. Torches lit the water. She found her reflection. Oh, look at that. An orange mask, an orange lantern around her middle, and a curling grapevine on her head. Pumpkin was a pumpkin. There you are, my little pumpkin, Cinderella said. What a perfect costume. She swept Pumpkin into her arms. I didn't think you would make it, but then I saw you dash into the garden. I'm so happy your paw feels better. Better? Her paw? What? Wait a second. Cinderella was right. Pumpkin had ran her here from the spring house. She had dashed through the grass. She had raced through the trees. And her paw hadn't hurt once. It was all better. Now the ball would be just wonderful. A bang began to play. A band began to play live. Lee waltz. Pumpkin wiggled out of Cinderella's arms, and soon her paw hit the ground. She started dancing, and she didn't stop all night. Not when the clock struck nine or ten or eleven. Not even when the clock struck midnight.